we've had multiple reports that citizens are being shelled by Russia in the Ukraine. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken says, We have very credible reports that Russia may be committing war crimes. In other news, Visa and MasterCard will both suspend their operations in Russia, effectively blacklisting the country from their financial services. Russian banks are already saying that they're going to go to Chinese systems to issue payments. Hello everyone, this is Mr. Obvious, and today on the internet, I'm going to talk about Russia. We've had a lot of mixed stories about Russia and the war efforts going on right now, with a lot of people saying that Russia is losing and Putin is out of his mind. He's got no idea what he's doing, and he's obviously losing the war. Well, has anyone actually taken a look at the maps? So I've got a map right here. This is a GIF, and it shows you the sure but steady encroachment of Russian forces into the Ukraine. Uh, you can see here that they're pushing forward, and what it appears is that Russia is engaging in an encirclement strategy. In other words, they are trying to surround major targets, two of which they will basically surround and take over all at once. We're going to talk about what Putin is really thinking. Is he truly a madman? Is he truly just indiscriminately bombing civilians? And will being banned from PayPal, Visa, MasterCard, and all these other financial services really cripple the country? Well, we're going to talk about that, folks, and more. But before we do, remember to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon for updates for future content, and if you like the videos that I make, please share them with your family and friends and on social media. And now a word from our sponsor. Introducing Webull. Webull is a trading app where you can buy and sell cryptocurrency and stocks. Join Webull today to get up to five free stocks worth anywhere from $27 to $9,600. My friends, it's basically free money. You also get a $5 cryptocurrency reward when you make your first crypto trade. Again, join Webull today, deposit some money, and you could get up to $9,000 in free stocks. One heck of a deal, folks. Sign up today by clicking the affiliate link down below. And we're back. Okay, let's jump right in, folks. We've got several reports that Russia has been attacking and shelling civilians. Now, personally, I think that these stories are a little bit exaggerating. Yes, there have been casualties in this war. I am not trying to downplay the tragedy. However, I do want to point something out. Where was this... Uh, controversy when Americans bombed an entire family in Afghanistan. Do you mean to tell me that casualties in a wartime setting are only bad because Russia is the one doing it? What about Ukraine? For years, Ukraine has engaged in militarial activities. It has caused the deaths of many, many people. Do you mean to tell me that in a war, all that matters is what people are saying on Twitter? So when I see these headlines, innocent victims slaughtered by Putin, Ukrainian parents, they lose their, like they lose their 18 month year old kid. They were on their way to the hospital. There was a Russian shelling. Yes, this is devastating. This is a tragedy. It's horrifying, but this is what happens in a war. I want to take a look here, folks. They say that an 18 month year old boy named Kirill was fatally wounded in the Southern city of Maripol after Russian forces shelled Ukraine's second city just minutes into a, an agreed ceasefire on Saturday. Karel's devastated mother, Marina Yatsko, and her boyfriend, Fedor, were later seen grieving as they embraced their son. Ugh. See, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how to talk about stories like these because it is clearly an attempt to emotionally manipulate you. Yeah, I understand. There's people that have been hurt. Civilians. Children. But again, this is what happens in a war. Now, I don't agree with the assessment that Russia is out there actively committing war crimes. I think Russia is hitting strategic targets and uh, they're doing what they need to do. I don't think Putin is out there saying, Mwohoho, nuke them all. I want them all gone. Every man, woman, and child. You know, like in an Anakin moment. I killed them. I killed them all. And not just the men, but the women. And the children, too. I hate them! Sorry, sorry. I know this is not the time to be making a Star War reference. It, it really is uh, quite saddening and quite harrowing. Uh, here in this story, they say heartbreaking scenes as Putin rains bombs on 
Ypres Green Corridor, saying that many civilians have been killed in the ceasefire, is shattered in seconds. So apparently the peace talks between Ukraine and Russia have not been going well. A Ukrainian peacekeeper was actually shot and killed after being accused of being a Russian spy. Yeah, Ukrainians taking out Ukrainians. But this is the kind of insanity that you see in a major war. Now, to be fair, this is the first major war in my lifetime. Like I know there was Iraq and Operation Desert Storm, but I was young. I didn't see everything. But for the first time in many of our lives, many of my generation and the next generation, we're seeing a major conflict. What does it really tell us that civilians are casualties in this war? It doesn't really tell us anything at all. In fact, I think that it's uh, polarizing and I think that it's one-sided. Effectively, right now, you have the entire world trying to cancel an entire country. We're not talking about uh, a YouTuber. We're not talking about a social media star. We've got Visa and MasterCard suspending all their operations in Russia. Here on The Guardian, Visa and MasterCard will both suspend operations in Russia. Transaction to be cut off after Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky urged companies to take action. So Visa and MasterCard have canceled Russia and all Russians. And again, is it really fair to blame an entire group of people for their government? When America goes to the Middle East and we drop bombs on civilians, there are people in the Middle East, especially among the radical elements, that's, that would say, see, all Americans are bad, all Americans are perpetuating this evil, and all of Americans are the enemy. This is the same thing we're doing to, to, to Russia and to Russians. People are going out there, they're saying all Russians are bad, all Russians are responsible which is ridiculous. So here the story says, Visa and MasterCard have announced tonight they will be suspending operations in Russia over the invasion of Ukraine. Visa said in a statement that it would cut off transactions over the coming days, and consequently cards issued in Russia would not work abroad, as well as foreign issued cards in Russia. Alfred Kelly, chairman and chief executive officer of the US-based digital payments company said, quote, we are compelled to act following Russia's unprovoked invasion of Ukraine and the accept unacceptable events that we have witnessed. Okay, I'm just gonna stop them right there. They keep pushing this narrative that the invasion of Ukraine is unprovoked. It was unprovoked. Oh, they did it for no reason. Yeah, no, that's, that's just wrong. I'm sorry, but it's wrong. For years now, Putin has been trying to tell NATO and, you know, the West, stop spreading towards us. NATO has steadily encroached on Russian land. And Putin, even in 2008, was saying this. We have a red line. If you cross and you try to put NATO in the Ukraine and you try to go to Belarus and you try to expand and you try to block our boats and our access to the Black Sea, we will push back. And what did NATO do? They ignored Putin. Time and time again, NATO has talked about expanding into the Ukraine. Now, those of you got to understand, Ukraine is right in the middle. You've got all these NATO countries, and then you've got Ukraine, and it's like a big block. And it helps give them ass access to the Black Sea. It's very important for them to have those warm water ports, because everywhere else in Russia, the ports freeze. It's too cold. So what is Putin finally doing? He's invading Ukraine because NATO wouldn't back off. So, you know, a lot of people are talking about civilian uh, casualties. You also have 1.5 million people fleeing the Ukraine. They're calling it Europe's fastest growing refugee crisis since the Second World War. And I'm gonna be honest, the world is not making it better. I mean, look at this. Here on the Daily News, Netflix and TikTok suspend service in Russia due to the Ukrainian <laughs> invasion. Oh no, I won't be able to get my highly diverse woke Netflix programming anymore. I like how these companies think like it's a punishment to to suspend service. It's like I I uh, <laughs> banning TikTok based based and red pilled. I don't like TikTok. Oh look, another degenerate dance and and a woke meme. Oh no, no more TikTok. The war is over. <laughs> Pack it up, Russia. You lose. It's just so hilarious to me and so ridiculous. You can't just cancel a country. It doesn't work. And I'll prove it to you folks. Check out this story on the Wall Street Journal. Russian banks to turn to China to sidestep cutoff from payment systems. In other words, Russian banks are joining China's union pay 
among other services. Guess what? They will not need SWIFT or Visa or MasterCard or anything. Russian banks that may have been cut off from global payments networks are turning to China's state-owned union pay system as the country tries to sidestep boycotts by Western businesses for its invasion of Ukraine. So you know what? All these companies can virtue signal on Twitter about how, oh, we're going to suspend Russians from our services because of their unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen because this is exactly what I'm seeing happening. All you're doing with this endless, uh, I want to call it xenophobia. What else can we call it? This persecution of Russians. Let's just say that. All you're going to solve by persecuting Russians is you're going to convince the Russian people that Putin is right. Did you know that Putin's approval ratings are through the roof? They're going like, yeah, look at um, all the whole world is attacking us. They're banning us. I can't even make videos on OnlyFans. Putin was right. We had to take the Ukraine. We had to fight. We got to keep fighting or it's all for nothing. All these companies are making it worse. The governments right now of the world are making it worse. This this insane antagonism towards Russia is ridiculous. I mean, look at this. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said that today the country was in talks with Poland in order to orchestrate a deal that would allow Polish fighter jets to be flown by pilots from the Ukrainian Air Force in order to combat Russia's air superiority. How is this not declaring war? How is this not an act of war? At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if Russia actually uses one of those nukes. I've explained why Putin is invading. I've explained why it is so important for him to take the Ukraine. But what do we have? We've got American politicians continuing to antagonize Putin. We've got American companies continuing to persecute Russians. And it's just all accelerating to what looks like, like a world war is going to break out. And I, I fear the nukes. I really do. And I, I think this is a serious threat. At this point, I'm starting to think that the world kind of deserves it. Because it's like everyone is doing the exact opposite of what they need to do to make the situation better. It's disgusting, folks. It's just, it, it's disgusting on all sides. But that, my friends, is merely the obvious. Well, that's all for now, folks. What do you think about this story? Let me know by commenting down below. Look, war sucks and what's going on is terrible, but... I'm just so upset at everyone pretending like, you know, just Russia's bad and it's for no reason and we're just going to cancel a whole country and we're going to persecute a whole group of people. It's just all toxic nonsense and someone has to speak up. So yeah, thanks for watching folks. Have a good one and I'll see you all next time.